Offense, uh, here you got a, a pretty nice quarterback room coming back um, and, and some other weapons. You, you added some some key targets in the transfer portal at tight end receiver. Nick, Nick I'll let you start. G- give me a quick rundown on what you're expecting this next year. Yeah, I mean, the the clear, obvious one is, is Quinn, you know, Heisman favorite, looking for him to build. I mean, hasn't played a full healthy season at Texas since he's been here. Um, gone went down his first year, went down a little bit last year. So that's the biggest thing is he can stay healthy. You know, I think he needs to add a little bit more weight. He added speed last off season and, and honestly cut down, but I'd like to see him add a little bit more weight because I still think he can move, but protect yourself from injury. Um, I mentioned four of our starting uh, offensive linemen are returning. So that's huge for us. Um, you know, all those guys are just complete forces to be reckoned with. If you definitely got a first rounder out there um, in banks, um, our receivers, yes, we have a departure from Ad- Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Jordan Whittington. Um, you know, those are really big standouts that, that are leaving us. Even Jatavian Sanders are starting tight end. But you just go to the transfer portal. You get Isaiah Bond, who is, you know, the top receiver in the, in the portal, who, you know, was great for Bama last year. Add him to the roster. Silas Bolden from Oregon State. Matthew Golden from Houston. Um, you know, just continue just to build that room with experience and I think I looked the average 40 time of our receiver room is like a sub four, four, which is insane. It's like one of the fastest receiving rooms I've ever seen in in like my life. Like uh, we've got multiple guys that run four threes. Um, And at the end of the day, you can't coach speed, you know, like especially in college, I think in the NFL, like everyone's pretty fast for the most part. I mean, obviously there's those outliers like Tyreek Hill, but that's what, what makes him so special is his speed. Mm-hmm. And in college speed just dominates. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's something that really, I think is changing a lot from this year to last year. Xavier worthy was a speedster, but now that we have three guys that are going to be out there that all can match the same, you know, vertical get go, at the end of the day, I think that's something that's huge. And then, you know, I haven't even touched on our running back room, but CJ Baxter had an excellent freshman year last year. He was a guy who started the season as our starter and then got replaced by Jonathan Brooks because Jonathan was on fire and then ultimately had to take over starting roles. And then we had Jaden Blue that stepped in nicely as our number two back. So super excited about everything that's going on right now on the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, I, I, the one thing that I've always kind of been critical about with this Texas team is sometimes we lose our identity midway through the game. And I think that's just a testament sometimes to Sark's play calling. And I would, you know, I think sometimes he calls a great game, but I would love for him to give up the play calls to, you know, d- delegate it to an offensive coordinator. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, I want him to focus fully on the game. And, you know, that might not be so in style, but I do think sometimes we forget our identity on offense and we get a little bit one track minded and we lose kind of like that, that uh, variance that makes us so special, you know? Um, But that's just kind of a nitpicky little note there. Um, But yeah, we're excited about the offense. You want to go to that? I would just mention, you know, that Alabama receiver room in 2019, you know, that had rugs, Judy, uh, well, it's too too many guys to count Waddle. at this point. Waddle, yeah. right? And then Devonte Smith, yeah. Heisman winner. Yeah. Uh, you know that that's and who was their OC? <laughs> right? It was Steve Sarkeesian. So trying to replicate that amount of speed for your decision maker and Quinn Ewers, I think, is certainly something that Sark has been wanting to do, but having to establish himself as a recruiter and obviously establish that the program is ready for that type of talent. Um, and I think. Again, while we don't have maybe the experience at the receiver position, although in those transfers, we did get some of that experience that we had this past year with Worthy and with Mitchell um, and with Sanders, I think the talent is certainly there. Um, And not to mention, you know, four of the five guys that are being brought into the roster as, as true freshmen also have tantalizing speed, just ridiculous speed to the point where I texted Josh and, and Nick throughout the recruiting cycle being like, are we going to flip one of these guys to corner? Like we have so yeah. many, so many yeah, incredible deep. athletes. Like we, we might as well at this point and, and turn one of these guys into, into Trayvon Diggs if we can uh, another Alabama thing, right? S- Steve just taking from the mentor and, and becoming, you know, in his own right, one of the best coaches and leaders of men in college football. Um, and I think so much, that, so much of that has to do with the adversity that he dealt with, you know, earlier in his life. And he's come out on the, the opposite side of that, obviously stronger. 
Um, yeah, not much else to, to add on the offense. I just, you know, five-star running back who was a true freshman last year going into his second season. He is a, a huge, huge unit. That's, that's Cedric Baxter, CJ Baxter. Um, and then Jaden blue, who is one of the most versatile speed backs, elusive, but also great catching passes out of the backfield will be that one, two punch for us. Um, and they're going to make a lot of noise. I know that, you know, everyone in Columbus thinks that they have the best running back duo in the nation. And they, they just might with Quinshawn Jenkins coming from Ole Miss. And then obviously Travion Henderson returning for the Buckeyes. Um, but I think our, I think our backfield will, will give them a run for their money. Certainly. Yeah. And on the, the backfield, that's great. On Nick's point of the offensive line, we're returning for four of the five guys. And the other guy we're bringing in Cameron Williams, the right tackle spot is six, five, three sixty. So he is literally just like a house, like a small little house on the right side. So that's <laughs> that's just great to have there. And, you know, we're coming into the SEC where there's a pretty nice offensive tackle at LSU, Will Campbell, who's getting a lot of love. But Kelvin Banks was ranked higher in pass blocking on PFF. So we got to feel really good about what he can do. And he's definitely a first round pick, which is a, that's it, man. Like the fact that we're talking about having an offensive lineman as a first round pick. God. Like that, that's SEC football in a nutshell. We went to Arkansas and they mauled us on the line, mauled us. They were massive. Yeah. And we weren't. And Sark went and he recruited his ass off on the offensive line and the defensive line. You want to win in the SEC football? Who did Nick shout out earlier in the show? Will Anderson. That you got to be ready to play that guy. You got to be ready to play the guy that a team trades back. They took a guy second overall and they moved up to the third spot, gave up their first round pick this year to go get that guy. And it paid off because he dominated in the NFL as a rookie. You have to be ready to go against that guy coming off the edge. And we have that. We have four returning offensive linemen who are good, who could be pros maybe. One of them at the left tackle spot like we're hitting home, especially. Top 10 pick. Quinn Ewers, his long ball as a freshman, retro freshman sucked. It just did. It was not good. It stunk. Last year, though, and he put that thing on display real early, pretty damn good. He has shown that he can progress as a thrower. He's willing to learn as a thrower, right? He chopped them all off. He took it more serious, took it himself more seriously. His long ball leaps and bounds better. If you don't think it's going to get even better this offseason, He's going to, like Nick said, like he dropped some weight, still a little bit injury prone, but I think he's a smart enough quarterback, a smart enough player and wants to win and wants to be successful at the next level enough that he's going to take that into stock and he's going to work towards it. He's a hardworking player. He knows whether they're actually close in skill set or not. There's a guy with Manning on his last name, but on the back of his jersey, who's got his last name Manning waiting in the wings. And the minute things aren't going well for number three, everyone's going to be chanting for number 16. The, he, he's that he's the number one NIL athlete has is barely taking a few snaps. That guy's waiting in the wings and it's just as good as you were. You might be the Heisman favorite. It doesn't matter. Like Jalen hurts was a baller at Alabama and he balled at Oklahoma. And guess what was gone to a super bowl. Things weren't going well for him in the national championship. Nick Saban yanked his ass and they won. Sark won't be afraid to do it. He's seen how it's done. He will do it at the bat. And by the way, like that's what it takes. Toss talks about luck. Yeah, there's a lot of luck. A lot of unbelievable risky mm -hmm. and ballsy decision-making that went in with Nick Saban right and on, on, on his runs. But I love what Quinn Ewers has developed. And Nick talks about the speed and Toss talks about the speed with the receivers. Like that's what that long ball is going to take, man. Yep. So and just really that. quickly about Manny. I know there's a lot of like rumors, like would he transfer? Like he's Quinn's coming back from the year. Should he go somewhere else? He's come out and said he has no interest in doing that. And if you think about it, Quinn's gone down back to back years. Mm -hmm. Manning is one play away from getting into the game and being the guy, you know, at the mm -hmm. same time, like you just said, like Quinn could also get benched and Manning is the guy. And ultimately like, you know, that's the, it's not a good case for us. Cause that means we're not doing well or something bad happened, but you know, I think if in a perfect world, like Quinn plays his butt off and then gets drafted in the first round and then Manning takes the reins and plays two more years and gets drafted in the first round. Like that's the template right there. Yeah. Yeah. In so many parts, I don't think uh, Amari Dyblack's game came up unless I missed it too. I think it you did not added him. Yep. Another yeah, and who's, he's, I don't know how much you've seen him play, but you've seen he's, he's another <laughs> dude. Uh, I, I saw Happily him playing seen. in Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
defense, Josh, I'll, I'll let you start us out here, and then I'll go Alex, Nick, as we wrap it up. Uh, I know you lose Jalen Ford, who was a stud, but I'm looking down the tackle sheet, and it looks like a lot of these guys from last year back. How does it look on that side? Um, I mean, look, man, we had really young corners, right? And that was a big issue, I guess, for us against Washington. Derek Williams, also a young safety, came in, and he missed the first half against Washington, and he came in stale. Um, that completely changes. Those guys get another year under their belt, and they were pretty fantastic as underclassmen. We bring in Makuba in the defensive backfield at Clemson. I'm going to get to your defensive and like linebacker spots in a second, but I want to start there in the defensive backfield, which was tab the weakest part of our defense last year. And we and we're getting better with age, which you have to in college football. You cannot rely on the transfer portal. You cannot rely on that. Right, you can't to, to fix your team year in and year out. You have to grow guys within, and I think we're going to be doing that. Malik Muhammad was fantastic as a freshman. Brooks was great as a sophomore. I think, and Williams was really good. I think you're going to see those guys step up. And Kubu is going to tie it all together. He was excellent at Clemson. Um, the, uh, well, we will name the guy that we brought in from Bama, Blackshire. He comes in, right? We didn't name uh, um, Nye Black last time, but we bring him in. Like the, he's he's a really strong linebacker that we're excited about. And outside of that, man, like we got you know Trey Moore who at UTSA put up ridiculous sack numbers. He may not be able to replicate that in the SEC, but to think he's going to go from, you know, 12 plus sacks to two is a little ridiculous. So we have him coming in. That's a really good linebacker. And the best thing that I love about our team right now is we just have, we have great depth on the defensive side. You know, we lose sweat. Who's a monster. And we lose Murphy. Who's a monster. Both are going to be Murphy is going to be a first round pick. Sweat's probably a second at worst, a third round pick, depending on how teams look at his size as a benefit with that at 360 uh, or, or, or a down um, with his conditioning. We have Trey Moore. Baron Sorrell is a guy we've always been really hyped about. Alfred Collins is a guy we've always been really hyped about. Ethan Burke, three star player who came onto the scene. He's an absolute moose. We love him. And, you know, the elephant in the room, or maybe now the two elephants in the room, back to back top recruits we got last year um, and the year before, Anthony Hill Jr. and Colin Simmons. I mean, what Anthony Hill did as a freshman and what he's going to do, it's Harold, it's going to be Harold Perkins level. Um, and those are, that's a real, uh, yeah, exactly on your face, Chris. That's a serious compliment. And I, and I know what I'm saying when I say that. I know how good, good Harold Perkins is. Um, and Colin Simmons, you know, not a lot of pressure on him as a, to contribute as a freshman because we have so many talented players, but you bet he's going to get his. We have really good depth on the defensive side of the field. We may not have Quinn Ewers or that like superstar. I mean, Hill could be, honestly, but we may not have that superstar household name right now. We have serious depth at every position. So I think that's something we're all really excited about. Yeah. I mean, you went through the personnel. There's not much to to add there. I, I will say, you know, we we lose our defensive line coach in Bo Davis. He'll end up at he he ended up at, at LSU. I actually think what he's going to be able to do to unlock Harold Perkins even more <laughs> is going to be something that that LSU is going to be really, really happy about. Um, but I also think bringing in, you know, some new coaches on the defensive side helps a lot for our guys too, and can energize our guys in, in a new kind of way. Um, and I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm excited to, to see what those specifically the edge rushers can do on the outside. I think mm. them going into their third season, um, will be really, really helpful Burke and then, and Sorrell actually would be senior, but we didn't get enough pressure as good as our interior defensive line was last year. I think that's where we fell short at moments was, was really executing that pressure and then, and then getting to the quarterback and, and, you know, not only just pressuring and, but, but touching them, right. And getting some QB hits. And then of course sacks as well, and forcing some fumbles. Um, and so I, I'm those two guys on the outside plus Hill coming up the middle or, or wherever he's, he's a guy that, you know, you can put all around the field. Um, he has to be kind of our standout in order for our defense to be at the same level that I believe our offense will be at, but I have the utmost faith. And then, you know, our, our defensive back, John A. Barron, who, who led our team in tackles at that position, he's coming back for a super senior year, you know? And so, so really excited to, for his veteran presence in the locker room for sure. Yeah. I don't know if there's anyone that these guys didn't hit that, uh, <laughs> that I could talk about at this point. I mean, the biggest one for me, is they, they are, your team is thorough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Hill for me is the biggest one. I mean, he had a great freshman year and we were super excited when he decommitted from AM and came over to Texas. That was something that we were ecstatic about and bummed when he had initially first committed to AM because we knew that he belonged at home as a Longhorn. But yeah, I really think that that's going to be a guy that is going to be a household name in a matter of weeks when he plays SEC football. 
Um, you know, he, he just he reminds me of like Devin White. You know, you mentioned Harold Perkins, but there's just like another one that, you know, just a guy that just is an all out gamer. He's in every single play, um, mm. can do it from anywhere on the field. And then, yeah, the secondary is another one that we're looking to really build. Uh, like Josh said earlier, they were really young last year, got exposed in some games, got burnt deep, uh, you know, battled injuries. But it, corner and safety, like those are positions that you really have to have a high IQ and you have to really mature as a player. You can't really just depend on full your physicality. Like a lot of it is just like how you how you approach the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, only, size can only take you so far as a defensive back. Speed is one thing, but those guys have speed. They test well. Um, it's a mentality. And at the end of the day, I think that they're coming in there with another year of seasoning. And, you know, spring football is going to be really fun because iron sharpens iron. And we've got a lot of fast receivers that we already mentioned that, you know, they're going to have to comp- compete with. And I think that's going to make our defensive backs a lot better. And then, you know, the biggest thing is the defensive line. You know, how are we going to, fill the void of losing Byron Murphy and, and uh, Tavondre Sweat. Um, well, I mean, you've got a lot of young guys there too that are ready to step up that, you know, have been highly recruited that, you know, decide to stay for a couple extra years. Alfred Collins is one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Ethan Burke off the edge is going to be great. Colin Simmons is coming in. He's going to be awesome. And then Trey Moore, the the big transfer from UTSA, I think he's going to make a huge impact. Mm. We we can't wait can't wait to see it uh, we have been anticipating the addition of texas to the league for a couple of years wish they could have made it happen before now but um got, got a little glimpse of it in tuscaloosa last year and you, you guys are coming and it's gonna be fun to see uh i have to think you can come to nashville this year don't you i believe so yeah 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 so if you guys you guys need to make that road trip, uh, yeah, if we make we make it out, we'll definitely give you a shout and, and we'll have to. Couch go. behind you looks Absolutely. comfortable. It might be. Uh, it might... <laughs> it's not as comfortable as it looks, but uh, <laughs> okay, all right. Might, but, all right. But it works for my dog. So anyway, um, gentlemen, yeah, we'll rough. we'll do this again. Uh, we got a lot of a lot of time between now and opening day. You got you got basketball. I think the Longhorns are headed to the NCAA tournament. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting times. Uh, Horns Up podcast. Tell folks, Nick, I'll, I'll let you tell folks everywhere that they can find that. Yeah, so uh, we're the Horns Up Talking Texas podcast. Anywhere you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, YouTube. We're also the Charity Stripe, too. So the three of us have our yeah. own uh, all-encompassing sports show that also interviews people. So if you want to dive deeper into all their sports, you can find us there. Uh, really active on Instagram, the dot charity dot stripe. You know, we answer as many DMs as possible, have some fun polls then TikTok as well. So find us wherever you get your content. But yeah, excited to, uh, you know, talk some football and even some hoops down the road. Maybe March Madness, we can get baseball. We need you, Chris. Baseball. You're a a baseball whiz. You're going to have to take us to school, man. We we have a we have a bit of a fun team. So we're going to need to get you on and talk about it. Yeah, well, we're we're gonna, we're doing this the first day of March, and as soon as I get off, I'm gonna go watch the Houston Astros College Classic, which uh, your team is playing in. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'll I'll be watching your baseball team a little bit this weekend too. Yeah, a lot lot going on. Football sure. never stops here. We're, we're trying to process baseball and basketball at the same time, but <laughs> March is the best month of the year. Um, if you can't get excited about that, then, no then we're probably not friends. But in any case, <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, thank, thanks for joining us, and, and we'll catch you again soon. Okay. okay. All right. I'm I'm Chris Lee. This is the Southeastern 14 podcast presented by Bet Online.